Hey guys, what's up? This is Dale Stewart here from Seether and you're listening to Zanzana. Dale, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure for me to have you on this interview because you're from South Africa and I'm from North Africa, so we're between Africans, you know? Yeah, we, we've got it covered, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the beginning, there was a difficulty, I think, for a South African band from Pretoria to, uh, to, 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 to join the, uh, the business. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's something that had never really been done before. Um, so we didn't really know where to start. Um, but we, we, we were driven, man, and we were hungry and, and we, we believed in, in our band and, and in ourselves, I think, um, you know, with hopefully not being cocky, you know, at the same time. Uh, but you have to kind of, you know, hope for the best expect the worst but hope for the best you know but um we just kept playing and we we got out there and you know eventually you know got an album together and sent that album overseas and it got passed around and it was actually the head of sony in germany passed it to wind up records in new york and they're the ones that picked it up and said hey you know we like your demo after we'd spent all this effort on this album. They're like, oh, we love the demo. You know, we want to meet you guys. Can you fly tomorrow? We said, well, no. Being from Africa, we need, or being from South Africa, we need visas to go absolutely anywhere in the world. So give us a week, we'll, we'll get visas, and then we'll come, you know, see you guys. And we flew to New York and played a showcase, and they signed us. Yeah, crazy. And... Was there a scene in South Africa when, uh, in that time? Yeah, yeah, there's definitely a scene. Um, actually, a really cool scene, actually, man. There were really cool bands. Um, I was actually surprised. I'm like, you know, why, why did we, you know, get signed? You know, they, they were like really great bands. I, I would have thought would have had a shot before us. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm obviously grateful, but... Um, The scene was really cool back then. Uh, honestly, now I've, I've been living in the States so long, like I don't get back a lot. And when I do, it's strictly family time. Like I don't go out to clubs and stuff, you know, I just, I just want to spend time with the family. Um, so I'm not really sure what it's like now, but, um, but it was cool, man. And then, you know, the couple of years after we left, you know, then they started to open or, you know, started like a little TV station that played local music videos for local bands and things and it really kind of took off and um that was really cool to see um where it's at now i don't know i think i think rock you know rock's kind of i don't want to say it's suffering but it's just um i don't know it seems to have taken a bit of a back seat you know in a lot of a lot of the world um which is fine because you know it means that the comeback's on the horizon but um yeah i'm, I'm sure It's, it's the same there as, as, as in, let's say, the States or Europe. Probably the States, probably the States more so than Europe, actually. And um, the reaction in South Africa when you, you first signed your, your, with the company and get out your, your first uh, album, and surely when the, your, the songs became, you know, you, you were on Billboard and things like that, how was it? Uh, the whole thing was crazy, uh, like a, a, a sort of a whirlwind. Um, when we got signed by the label, that was just, well, the, 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 there's a couple of things that really stand up. The first time we heard our, our demo on the radio in South Africa, um, there was a DJ there called Barney Simon, and he had a show called The Night Zoo on the local pop station, and he would play you know, rock bands. That's how we found out about the cool new rock bands was through him. Um, but then he, he was like, oh, you know, send me your demos. You know, if I like it, I'll play it. And he liked our demo and he actually played it on the air. So that blew our minds. That was the most exciting thing. Then we got signed in South Africa, which was cool, but getting signed in the States was a crazy moment. Um, and then, yeah, and then seeing your album on like, you know, on like Billboard or seeing, a, you know, this, this is back in the days of like MTV and, you know, these, these cha you know, channels actually played music videos, you know, imagine that. And you see your music video on MTV and you're like, whoa, this is crazy. You know, it's like, 
I don't think that kind of stuff ever gets old. It's always exciting. You know, whenever we release an album, you know, you buy the billboard and, you know, see where it is. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's always an exciting thing. You know, I, I don't think that sort of rush ever wears off. You know, it's, it's addictive. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely part of why we do this, you know, just like when you walk out there and they scream and you play your songs and um, it's that same sort of buzz, you know, it's great. You played in, uh, in South Africa, I think, this year or last year. How the reaction, how the, 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 the crew, the people that came? Um, yeah, we actually played there just a couple of weeks ago. Um, we started this tour about eight weeks ago um, in the UK, then South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, and then finishing up here in nine Europe. Uh, it was really good, man. The, the reaction was amazing. It's by far the biggest show we've had there. They were about... They had to, you know, ex ex extend the grounds where they're having the show and bring an extra sound and stuff. And they ended up being about eight and a half thousand people, I think. And um, it was just great, an amazing crowd. And you know, the best part, my parents were there, you know, so they could see what we do and and um, you know, they could be all proud and and you know, do all that. And um, I had some cousins and stuff there and and some friends and. So it's great, you know, that, that stuff's always always nice. You know, we, we unfortunately don't get to go home and play as much as we'd like. So when we do, it's special, you know, we, we, we cherish those moments. But um, but yeah, you know, it, it, it costs a lot of money to go and play places now. You know, we have this crew of guys and, you know, flights and accommodation, everything. And, um, and you know, in South Africa, it's, it's a lot of money even just to to cover the costs we need to, to go. So we need to wait till there's a nice big show. <laughs> you know, we can't go and just do like a, a little club show and it, you know, it's not going to pay for itself. So you have to make a festival. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it, it was pretty much a festival that we did. You know, we had like, I think six other bands and it started at like noon and we played at, uh, I think maybe six or seven and um, it played as the sun went down and it was great, man. You know, just, you can really sense the pride that, that the people have for us when we go back and that, that feels so good. It's awesome. The audience of Cedar in South Africa, is it only white or is all South Africans are proud of Cedar? I think all South Africans. Um, I feel like when we started out, it was, you know, all, when, let's say when I was growing up, starting out playing music, um, it wasn't as integrated, but You know, by the time we were doing Battle in the Band or, you know, Battle of the Bands and stuff. And, you know, once we had this band going, it was definitely more integrated. Um, and you go back now and you'll see, you know, there'll be black heads with like Metallica t-shirts and Slipknot shirts and whatever, you know, hanging out and um, coming to the rock music. And um, yeah, it's certainly more, more integrated, you know, so that's, it's, it's cool to see. You know, it's cool to see the, the, the sort of blending of, of, of the culture, you know. It's awesome. It's tremendous. It's, uh, it's marvelous because nobody could imagine that the mix could be done. Well, yeah, I mean, it's such a, you know, it's such a crazy social experiment, you know, that happened there, um, you know, and there were some horrendous times and there were some good times and sort of everything in between. Um, You know, I hope with the new administration now that, you know, things are going to be better because the last, um, you know, Zuma's administration just didn't care about anyone but themselves um, and just lined their pockets and, you know, at the expense of just about everything. So, um, you know, I hope Ramaphosa and them, you know, I hope they, you know, do it right and they did it for the right reasons and turn things around, you know, because it's, It's a beautiful place and there's so, it has so much to offer and, you know, mineral wealth and tourism and, um, you know, talent and, and music and, you know, art. I mean, there really is, it's, there, it really has so much to offer, you know. Um, I think, you know, people need to see it for what it's worth, you know, rather than making headlines for, oh, corruption rocks, you know, South Africa, you know, that's not what people, you know. If people are like, oh, you know, hear about the art or the... Correction rocks in every part in Africa. Yeah, that's, you know, and in, you know, everywhere, man, in the States, you know, I think, I think with great power, generally, it generally corrupts people, I'm sorry to say. 
um, I think some people are just better at hiding it than others. Um, I feel like at least in South Africa, you know, I've never lived, you know, north of South Africa, but it uh, wouldn't surprise me if it's the same. And there's corruption and, and things there and embezzlement and stuff, but they, they don't bother to hide it. You know, I, f- I feel like maybe in Europe or the States, um, there's corruption and whatnot, but they, they're just good at hiding it. In South Africa, they don't even care. Like, what are you going to do? Like, what can what can you do? Like, yeah, I took the money, so what? You know? <laughs> so it's, it's kind of funny in a way, but it's actually not funny at all. Um, so it's it's weird. It's a, it's a weird place, you know? But I, I love it. I mean, you know, I, I go back, you know, once a year if I can, um, you know, to visit. Um, you know, my heart still, you know, belongs there. Uh, I, I, you know, and my family's all still there. You know, and that's the main that's the main thing. You know, reason I want to visit. But but I think once you've I think once you grow up in a place, you know, your that's sort of where your heart is. You know, uh, and I, I live I've been living in the states now for 15, 16 years now. Um, yeah, sixteen years. And um, but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm actually an American citizen now too. But you know, I'm, uh, I'm still South African at heart. You know? <laughs> oh, of course. Um, do you think one day to, to come back to, to South Africa or to, to make something to, to help bands to, to produce music and to discover new bands, to help them to, to, to have a worldwide uh, uh, audience? Um, to, in terms of moving back, um, I don't know that I'd ever move back. Um, you know, since we've been in the States, uh, you know, I've really sort of built my life there, you know, and we've built the band and we're based there and so our business is based there you know the see the touring and the see the um you know recording and and you know everything in between and you know and there's merchandise involved and um and then you have a house and a girl or fiance and you know you know i don't have any kids but you know sean's got a baby and So, you know, you, you get tied down and you're like, oh, this is where I live now. Um, but I can still go visit, you know, but I, I don't know if I'll ever be able to go and live there again. Um, who knows, maybe, m- m- maybe one day, you know, once, uh, I mean, who knows what's going to happen, things change. But do you help from distance? What's that? Do you help from distance? Um, I mean, that, that could always be a thing, you know, to go there with the intent of, you know, scouting out new bands you know, with potential and then working some sort of deal like, hey, you know, you guys come over, you know, we'll get a producer, you know, put an album together, you know, hit the road, you know, to see, if, you know, um, I mean, that's, that's definitely an option. Um, the only thing is it's, uh, it's, it's getting harder and harder to do that, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's, record labels are having a, a really hard time because you know everything's streamed and and you know or stolen um especially in africa yeah yeah you know and, and and everywhere you know so labels are having a hard time and that's that's traditionally would be the deal like if it was 20 20 years ago i definitely considered starting a label like okay we're going to start a label you know we'll We'll go find bands, we'll sign them, we'll take them out on the road with us, we'll promote them, you know, and then if they if they sell albums, we get our cut, everybody wins. But now to do that, you'd have to get guys over and then you'd have to kind of pay for it out of your pocket. Be like, okay, we're going to do the album. And then you'd have to be like, okay, well, we're going to do a 360 deal. Like, so I want, you know, 25% of merch and 25% of your live fees and like the labels are doing now and that kind of sucks man like I don't I don't know that that's fair for a young band you know and a lot of bands sign these these 360 deals and maybe it works for some of them I just I just don't think it's cool um, but I guess that's kind of what you have to do if you're trying to keep your label afloat um, but yeah I, I just feel like there's you know, sort of a diminishing piece of the pie that everybody's trying to divvy up. And the bands as, as it was, were really not getting much. I mean, the whole industry, like you get signed and then 
the label's basically a bank, so they give you all this money to make an album. They're like, okay, now you pay us back through your album sales. Um, but only once you've paid us back this million bucks or whatever it is, um, will you start getting your percentage of the royalty. So you don't make anything until that point. Then once, you, once you've paid, once you've recouped that debt, then you get something like 14% of like each CD that's sold. Nothing. I mean, bands get like so, can I say, screwed over like on these deals. Um, so all you have left is, okay, well at least we, we have our merch, we can sell merch at the shows, you know, maybe meet and greets, that's the new thing. Um, you know, and then you get your fee to play live, you know, so there's these things like, okay, at least we have that because they made all the money on the CDs. And I don't know if it's true of all labels, but our previous label before this one, um, for some reason we never seemed to, to recoup. You know, we never got out of that hole and we'd be like, hey, well, uh, you know, how's the, how the CD sales? Oh, no, you still owe this much. And we're like, we've sold like five million albums. Like, what, you know, how much, you know, what do we owe you guys? It's like, and they were just kind of shady and, you know, their lawyers would always, and we'd, we'd dumb band guys. I mean, we don't know what we're talking about. Um, and we'd have a lawyer and they'd go back and forth. And it's just, the whole industry is just screwed for, these rich sort of lawyer types, you know, start these record labels and take advantage of young kids that just want to get in. Like I would have signed, you, you could have given me a napkin and be like, Hey, you'll, you'll tour the world and play music every day. And I'd be like, show me where to sign. I'll sign this napkin. Um, and that's, that's what you do. You know, fortunately our, our deal wasn't the worst, you know, and, and you know, we do have control of, of everything else. Um, but yeah, a lot of new bands, they have these 360 deals where a label takes like a third or whatever of, of everything. So the, the one thing you had left, your live shows and all that, you have to give that away now. So it's even worse now for, um, for a lot of bands. But on the bright side, you know, it is, uh, it is po possible to just do your own thing. Um, get like a good management company, um, record your album on your own, you know, just get a buddy who knows what he's doing. I mean, you could do it in a, literally like your basement, you know, with a good laptop and a buddy that knows what he's doing and you can make it sound decent. That's, you know, such as the technology nowadays. And then you can promote it yourself. And, and, you know, if you wanted to sell physical CDs, just, you know, there's companies that have to, you know, do a distribution. Oh, yeah. Uh, look like a bat uh, you know they'll do like a distrib you know get a distribution deal with someone and and then just like a promotion company or slash management that helps you book tours and shows promotes you know your stuff and then sell it on iTunes or yeah. put it up wherever and um, that, that's possible to do nowadays so you, you're not as reliant you know in, in past years on labels so that's there's kind of a light at the end of the tunnel yeah. Thank you very much, Dale, uh, and it was very uh, good pleasure uh, talking with you. Uh, so, how about now for Cedar? Um, well, right now we're just winding up this tour. Um, we have a week left. We end in Amsterdam, so that that's going to be fun. Um, and then we go home for about two weeks, and then we do a month-long run in the States. And then uh, I think we have another break. And then another run in the States, which will lead us up to Christmas. Um, and then we, re we really would like to come back to Europe uh, in the new year and, and you know, do the, the big festivals. Um, you know, all the big European festivals in the UK and um, put a couple of our shows in, you know, in between. And I'd, hopefully Tunisia one day. I hope we, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see it. <laughs> do you know some uh, Tunisian bands? I don't. I don't know any. You have to. You have to name me some that I can. I can. Do you know Mirath? Mirath. It's no. A prog, it's a prog band. Okay. I'll YouTube it. M i r a t h. M y r a t h. Oh, M y r a t h. Okay. I'll YouTube that. Mirath. Mirath. Okay. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jail. Thank you. Sorry. Sorry for rambling uh, like a crazy person. <laughs> no. <laughs>
Zanzana, l'émission métal.